Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It's September the 8th, 2024. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, it's my belief that the biggest moments in life the ones you're going to remember and cherish the most when you're my age come in small moments, come in unexpected moments, right? You think you have your eye on the real game over here, and then you find out the real game was over there, right? Well, let's talk about a situation like that in my favorites folder right now. You have one of the biggest fights that could have been made at 147 pounds, right? It involved two guys, 35 and 38 years old, right? Both of whom had very little experience at 147 pounds, very little. And they were fighting at a smaller venue. Now, let me pivot right here for a moment. You know, we all have heroes. A group of my heroes in boxing are these smaller casinos who are just trying to make their venue more exciting and entertaining for their patrons. And they put together these fights, and this is the kind of fight that ends up at a smaller casino. Because both of these guys have recent losses. They have great histories, right? You'll see both of these guys fought big names. But if you're a smaller casino, you need people with names who will accept smaller paydays, right? You can't match the money that a Las Vegas or a New York City or a Los Angeles or a Montreal, Canada or a... Wembley Arena is paying people, right? You're on a limited budget. So here, let me name one of my heroes. Pichanga Resort and Casino in Temecula, California. They put together this fight, and folks, this fight was a hardcore boxing fans fight, right? Let me just say, too, um, I have the footage. It's in my favorites folder. The ring announcer is not going to remind you of Michael Buffer, right? You understand this is a smaller venue. In fact, early in the telecast, you're going to hear one of the ring announcers asking the other questions about the fighters. In other words, this is not a production where the, you know, boxing analysts are talking about talking with the fighters beforehand at the pre-fight meeting and stuff like that. This isn't that big a budget, right? But folks, it's in venues like Pechanga that you get the fights that set up the division. Now, before I talk about the fight, let's pivot to the division. Now, 147, the division where Ray Leonard met Thomas Hearns, the division that Terrence Crawford ruled. You remember, it's the division where Terrence Crawford met Errol Spence. Right, that division. Right now in 2024 is a wasteland. Right, just understand, the great welterweight division right now has one Goliath. And his name is Jaron Ennis. Right, folks, he laps the field. Right? An Ennis Norman fight, in my opinion, would not be competitive. I don't care what the records are. It would not be competitive. I believe an Ennis Mario Barrio fight would not be competitive. Ennis is the giant in the room, but understand the Ennis brand. Right? Ennis is a guy who destroys you. He doesn't want to win by decision. 
He has the tools to win by decision. But this is the young guy who's gifted. He knows it. He was, he was avoided for years. Right? His nickname should be Avoided Jared Ennis. Right? He was avoided for years. Crawford doesn't want to fight him now, and I don't blame Crawford. Right? You build up the legacy over years. You're an old man. By the way, Crawford's younger than Ivan Redcash here. Right? You're an old man. You've built up a big legacy. Sooner or later, you're going to have to leave the stage. Right? You see young guys like Jaron Ennis out there, and you have to think to yourself, like Joe Calzaghe thought to himself and looking at a young Carl Frotch, you know, maybe now is the time that I leave the stage. Well, understand. Jaron Ennis is avoided for a reason, so who could beat him? You don't want some new guy out there who doesn't know what's going on, right? Ennis is from a boxing hotbed, Philadelphia. He's from a fighting family, right? Ennis is the guy who really has a PhD in boxing. You see him, he's a switch, righty, lefty, inside, outside, you understand this is his moment right now. Unfortunately for him, there is no one in the division who can test him. So who can beat Jaron Annis? Or at least who can give him enough trouble where the fight's a classic, where it's not an 18-wheeler just running over roadkill and to me the answer is a kg vet you don't want a newbie in with this dude right freshmen don't belong in phd classes you need some guy who's been there who's done that who has fought great fighters who has been in the deep end of the pool against great fighters Right? Who has made mistakes? Right, folks? Mistakes are learning experiences. Right? If you have never lost, then in my opinion, you have never tried. Right? Even the guys they tell us who haven't lost, Mayweather, got tested, didn't he? Right? So let me just say, you want a tested guy in against Jaron Ennis. Even a guy who got dominated in a fight, like Jose Zapata got dominated in the Hitchens fight. Right? You want a dear Ennis to go off brand. Dear Ennis to get out of his construct and to think to himself, I'm going to have to go off brand. I'm going to have to try to fight like Hitchens. To win this fight because if I don't I might not now let's talk about this for gamblers this is that fight that had a hole in the line you know what I'm talking about even now after he got stopped in two rounds the way I see life Ivan Redcash should never be a plus 400 I mean never Right, so understand, I keep telling people, no one believes me and that's okay. More beer for me. I keep telling people that these bets make themselves. Right, you're just a computer program connecting the dots. Now, I thought hard about this fight, did not make a pre-fight video. Red Cash was going off at a plus 400. Plus 400. And Zepeda by stoppage was going off at less than a minus 400. He was going off at a plus 300. You looked at the two guys and you thought, there is no way in hell this fight's going to go even the 10 rounds it's scheduled for. Because both guys, right, let's not fall into the trap of, you know, ignoring the loser's attributes. Both guys had big punches. Both guys are older. I'm just telling you, older fighters 
they know when it's not their night. Right? They'll get knocked down a couple of times and they'll say, okay, gee, how much do I have left, not just tonight, but in my career? Am I going to spend that all here on this fight where my chances of winning are 2% right now? Right, so the setup was here for a stoppage either way. Understand, if you believe that, then you understood that you could put some on red cash at a plus 400, put some on Zepeda by stoppage at a minus 300, and have a net profit if you structured the bet the right way. Right? Well, let me just say, I didn't take it because the hole wasn't big enough in the line. For gamblers, you really make your money on fights like this. Not on big fights that everyone has overanalyzed, that has a line that has been scrutinized. Right? If you're a football better, you understand. The Super Bowl is going to be heavily scrutinized. Some of the playoff games are not going to be. Right? You want to bet on the unscrutinized lines. So here, let's talk about the fight. Take a look at the video. It's very important. Just understand Pachanga Resort and Casino in Temecula, California. They're one of the heroes in the sport of boxing. Right, The sport of boxing is made on moments like this. Understand... Chon Zepeda is one of the best possible opponents for boxing fans against Jaron Ennis. Right? In part because he's a wicked body puncher. In part because he's the KG vet who is going to be on his front foot even when he's fighting. A Regis Progre. Who he has fought. Right? So in this fight, just understand. Red cash is not washed in the slightest, right? A wash fighter is a guy who gets gradually beaten down, where you realize he just doesn't have the reserve. No, who Ivan Red Cash is, and Red Cash throws longer punches than Sean Zepeda, right? Zepeda is that hard-hitting short puncher. What happened to Red Cash is he gets hit with the perfect liver shot. Right, folks, this is not that far removed from Diego Pacheco's last fight. Right, Red Cash gets hit with the perfect liver shot. The fight's competitive up until that moment. But he gets hit with the perfect liver shot. He hits the canvas just like Diego Pacheco's opponent. Rolled into a fetal position in that fight. In other words, that's what liver shots do. It's as if someone just pulled the wiring between your body and one of your legs. That's what a liver shot feels like. Suddenly, a part of your body goes. And it's so sudden that guys hit with liver shots will roll on the canvas. You'll actually see it here in this fight. Right, Red Cash in a competitive fight. I don't care if he's 38, 48, 28. He gets hit with the liver shot. Now something remarkable happens here. I applaud everyone. This to me is a five-star moment. Right, Red Cash hits the canvas. He understands the fight's a big opportunity. So he wants to get up. Right, so Red Cash rolls around the canvas, and rather than stay on the canvas, he actually makes it up late in the count. He's trying to get up. But folks, boxing only gives you 10 seconds. So Red Cash gets up, he makes a mistake. As he stands up, he has his hand on the rope. Right now, the referee could have counted him out. You had a veteran referee here. Right? Veteran refs are also heroes to me. 
So the ref looks at him. The ref knows this is a wicked body shot, but the ref also knows this is the first round of the fight. Right? It's not like Red Cash is bone tired and can't continue. So the ref does the count, looks at him, reaches nine. It's a referee call here. Red Cash has his hand on the rope. An argument can be made that he's standing up in part because he has his hand on the rope. The ref lets the fight continue. I think it's the right call. Now understand, Zepeda sets up. This is KG Vet stuff. He sets up the left hand to the body. Right? Both guys are fighting left-handed. He sets up the left hand to the body with the left uppercut. Right? The uppercut hits Red Cash, who moves over to defend against uppercuts, leaves his side open, and Zepeda, who's a short puncher, the punch doesn't look like much. But that's the way it is with short punchers. Right? All you have to do is look at the Joe Lewis highlights from his career. You're going to see a bunch of fights where Lewis just looks like he taps the guy and the guy hits the canvas and the guy's out cold. Right? Well, understand. Here, Red Cash has been hit with a devastating liver shot. He makes it to the second round, but he's depleted. Life has changed. He never gets his legs back under him. Right for gamblers with macro views. Ivan Redcash remains a dangerous opponent. He got hit with a great liver shot in the first round. That's why he hits the canvas multiple times in the fight. The fight gets stopped in the second round. Understand, once he recovers from the liver shot, the rest of him doesn't have the wear and tear that a blood and guts, rough and tumble, eight, nine round affair would have had. So Red Cash, contrary to people saying, oh, is this it for him? Right, Red Cash is going to be a dangerous opponent who likely will have much more experience than an opponent. Understand, Red Cash fought Danny Garcia, for crying out loud. Went the distance with him. Right, so, you know, it's a thin line between success and failure. Writing off Ivan Redcash here is a mistake. This is the KG vet who, if I see him fighting, some young guy who's full of himself, who has no idea what it's like to be in the deep water against a Danny Garcia, right? Some young guy who has read headlines that, you know, Redcash got stopped in two rounds in his last fight and doesn't realize that it was a perfect liver shot from a left-handed puncher. Right? Understand, Zepeda. Zepeda's a puncher and he's a southpaw. Good luck for an orthodox fighter pulling off that shot. You have to hit like a Diego Pacheco or a Chon Zepeda to pull this off. Most fighters don't. So if Red Cash, the book you keep, where you are writing down betting ideas, write down Red Cash's name. Say, if he's in against a light-hitting opponent or some young guy who's clueless, Lord knows boxing is filled with both categories. Right, Red Cash is going to be a difficult out. Whether or not you think he wins the fight, play with the props. Because he got knocked down multiple times here in two rounds, you can imagine the over-under on his next fight, particularly if there's an age difference between himself and the opponent. Right, that, that over-under is going to be probably on the low side for a vet who's a tough out. Now let's talk about John Zepeda. You're Jaron Ennis. You want to make a name for yourself. Look, I don't blame Norman. I don't blame Barrios for wanting to get championship paydays. Right? Let's do the math. Let's say they offer you 1.5 times what you normally get to fight Jaron Ennis. Right? You're thinking to yourself, well, you know, why would I want to take that? That's less than two title defenses. There's no one here at 147. 
right? I mean, if I'm Mario Barrios, I can risk my title for a payday that's, let's say, 1.5 times or two times what I normally make, or I could go the route of just fighting regular guys, and I can extend my title reign. Right? In time, credible opponents will enter the heavyweight division. Or, excuse me, the 147-pound welterweight division. I don't have to fight avoided Jaron Ennis. Right? If I'm Norman, I have to realize, hey, I've just gotten a title. Let me get my feet wet. Let me have some title experience. Barrios, of course has fought people like Gervonta Davis in the past. Norman is not. Right? If I'm Norman, I think to myself, hey, let me establish my brand. I didn't fight my entire life to become a champion, to then, early in my reign, fight a Goliath. Let me actually get the experience of being a champion for a few fights. Let me cross that off my bucket list. Then, once I've been established, then I'll fight Jaron Ennis. Right, so understand, Ennis is looking for a dance partner. You knock on 35-year-old Sean Zepeda's door. Right, folks? The problem with fighting Zepeda is he will go to your body. The problem is, if a shootout happens, Zepeda's a short puncher. Understand, short punches increase your hand speed. You don't have to move your hands that fast if you're surgical with hard, short shots. I want people to look at the footage here. The first knockdown. It looks like Zepeda just taps him, doesn't it? You don't see Zepeda look like he's overextending himself. But Red Cash hits the canvas as if he's been shot. Look at him roll on the canvas, folks. He almost rolls into the referee. Look at him try to get to his feet, folks. That's a heroic effort. He does not have one leg. You want to know the tip-off? Look at the end of the round. Now, this is, this is a rough guy sport. So here you have a guy knocked down. He gets up with one leg, right? Because understand... The body shot has taken away a leg. He, of course, and this is a boxing story, he, of course, looks tough, right? He wants the other guy to know, hey, you haven't hurt me, even though seconds earlier we've seen him rolling on the canvas. So, of course, Red Cash, you know, is rough and tumble, tries to look rough and tumble, but you know he's badly hurt. Then the bell sounds to end the first round. I want you to look at Red Cash walking back to his corner. He's trying to look tough. Folks, he's still on one leg. He's still on one leg. That's how hard Zepeda hits. Now, if I'm an Ennis, I want to fight Zepeda. If I'm a Zepeda, I take the fight. Because Zepeda has already had a lengthy career. Cepeda wants another shot at the title, and he can do the math. If he beats Ennis, wow, that's a lot of beer for him and his honorage. If he doesn't beat Ennis, but he has moments in the fight, knocks down Ennis, dazes Ennis, is ahead on the scorecards when he gets stopped. Right, his blood and guts create some highlights that fans want to look at. If he gives Ennis a competitive fight, he wins. Right, if the fight is very competitive, he might even get a second payday in a rematch. Right, to Jaron Ennis and Eddie Hearn, look, you guys are complaining about Jaron Ennis being avoided, Jared Ennis. Right? Fight Jones Zepeda. He knows how to drive. Right? He's going to force Ennis to go off brand. 
and that's what you need. Ennis is not going to give us some um, methodical but boring Hitchens type victory, and that's the problem with Hitchens, right? Fighter who fights long, uses height, has a lean, can keep you at the end of a jab. That's not Jaron Ennis, right? Ennis is going to come out and he's going to want a stoppage. He's going to look at the Regis Prograde tapes and he's going to say, I can get a stoppage. He's going to look at the fight that Jones Zepeda had in Madison Square Garden where he got knocked down early, had to get off the canvas in a shootout and take down the young opponent. Right? Ennis is going to see the knockdown parts of those highlights and is going to say, I can land on this guy. The big winner of that fight is going to be us. Right? Because Joan Cepeda is the gunslinger. He's straight out of these Western movies. Right? He's the guy who has a gun. Right? Has the gun on his left holster. He has a great left hand. He's throwing punches like uppercuts. He's in the pocket. He knows when he's hurt, he can still come back in a fight because punchers like him only have to be right once. Folks, this red cash fight was completely competitive. The millisecond before Zepeda, who did land a good uppercut, lands the left hand to the body. This was a jump ball fight. It was competitive. Of course, life changed because Zepeda, a puncher, landed his punch and it was the perfect liver shot. So sometimes boxing's like this. You go years without seeing a great liver shot. Then suddenly you get two in 30 days. Right? The Diego Pacheco liver shot was masterful. The Chon Zepeda liver shot was masterful. If I'm Zepeda and I'm looking for big game, Ennis is where to look. If I'm Ennis and I'm looking for a competitive fight, I don't want to be. The champion everyone fears who doesn't have the resume of big fights. Right? And understand, you have a Zepeda figure at 160, not a Zepeda figure, an Ennis figure at 160 right now in Janabek. Right? If I'm Ennis, I don't want to be Janabek. I want to have the big fights. Because, quite frankly, at the end of your career, that's how you're remembered, right? You think Ali, Liston, multiple fights. Fraser, multiple fights. Norton, multiple fights. George Foreman, one fight and we know why. Because there's no way on God's green earth Ali would have won a rematch. Right? We define fighters, Ray Leonard. Right? Fights Duran. Fights Herms. Fights Hagler. Right? That's how we remember guys. Right? If I'm Jaron Ennis, I need that resume. Right? I want people to think about Terrence Crawford's career. Four divisions in which he's champion. You really remember Crawford off one fight, don't you? The Errol Spence fight. Right before the Errol Spence fight. And keep in mind, Crawford had already won rings in three, in three divisions. Crawford had fought guys like Kel Brook, Amir Khan. Right? Crawford had actually fought some tough guys. Right? For the boxing hardcore. He fought Victor Postal. We know that was a difficult fight. Turned out to be more difficult for Postal. Right? That's one of those rare Terrence Crawford fights that went the distance. Right? Fight fans understood. Postal was tough. Whether or not the general public did is of no concern. Right? But just to understand, Crawford's career, the minute before he fights Errol Spence, gets trumped by his performance against Errol Spence. That's how careers are measured. Jaron Ennis needs to have big fights. If there's no one at 147, 
he's going to have to start rating 154. Right? Think about Canelo. Right? The Mayweather fight. Understand, while he lost that fight, I feel he got dominated in that fight. It's a feather in his cap that when you think of Canelo, you understand that he fought Floyd Mayweather. Right? One of the judges, I believe, had that fight a draw or something like that. Understand, that's rare in the Mayweather career. Right? And, of course, Canelo fought Miguel Cotto, Danny Jacobs, the guys at 168, the champ at, a couple of champs, at 175. Right? He beats Kovalev, he loses to Bevel. Right? So Canelo has the kind of resume where you can say, okay, wow, that Canelo Callum Smith fight. That Canelo Caleb Plant fight. That Canelo Billy Joe Saunders fight. He's still the only man to beat Billy Joe Saunders. Jaron Ennis needs fights like that. Right? He needs to be tested. I'm sure he privately hopes some guy is in the ring with him who's actually rough and tumble. Who he can actually show us why he's Jaron Ennis. Some guy's going to test him and force the great performance out of him. I believe Chon Zepeda would try to do just that. Right? Lord knows. If Ennis is on his back foot, he can't make the mistakes that Ivan Redcash made. Thinking, hey, it's the first round. We have a whole fight here ahead of us. Um, you know, let me just be a little bit mindful. Let me not think that the next punch Sean Cepeda throws is going to change life in this fight. Right? Take a hard look at the highlights in my favorites folder. Sean Zepeda, Jaron Ennis, sign me up. I'd love to see that fight. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Let me also point out too, I said the ring announcer was not exactly Michael Buffer. Look, I didn't mean to diss the guy. He's doing his job. He did it extremely well. I just meant to highlight the fact that very important fights, very important fights in boxing take place at places like the Pachanga Resort and Casino. I applaud the ring announcer. I applaud the venue. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. Thanks for stopping by.